a potentially disappointing leak on the original trilogies on Blu-ray, and comings and goings at your local comic book shop. It's Monday, January 31st, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead stories. While it's far from an official announcement from Lucasfilm, it is somebody at 20th Century Fox with a title speaking to a real publication, albeit a Norwegian one. With those caveats out of the way, Vincent Marcius... The 20th Century Fox representative for home entertainment marketing told the Norwegian magazine Release that only the most recent special editions of the Star Wars films would be contained on this year's upcoming Blu-ray editions. While this will no doubt come as a disappointment to many Star Wars fans, it is not, however, unprecedented as Lucas withheld the release of the original versions of the original trilogy for many years after the special editions themselves were released in 1997, waiting nearly 10 years to release them in 2006 on a DVD reissue package and then only as a non-remastered, non-anamorphic direct transfer of an early 90s Laserdisc edition. Now, as stated before, this was an on-the-floor interview at the Las Vegas Expo by a Norwegian magazine, translated back into English, and it was a statement again by 20th Century Fox, not Lucasfilm itself. As always, until we hear it from Lucasfilm, it's not official and anything could change. While I admit my Norwegian is a bit rusty, there did not appear to be any further information in the article as to what the bonus features may contain, or exactly to which special editions Mr. Marcius was referring to. That is, are these new special editions, or are they the same ones that we saw in the previous DVD releases? As always, time will tell. However, if you believe your Norwegian may be a little better than mine, I encourage you to go look at the original article at www.release.no, and you will find the interview on page 8. From the uncertain perpetual twilight of Scandinavian cinema magazines, we move now to two hard, fast, rock-solid announcements that we received in the past week regarding the goings-on at comic book shops. First, the good news. It was announced last week, naturally on MTV.com, that Dark Horse would be premiering a new Star Wars title in May of this year. Star Wars Jedi The Dark Side will debut in May of this year and will revolve around Qui-Gon Jinn and take place approximately a generation before The Phantom Menace. Despite the title, however, writer Scott Alley told MTV News that the Sith will not be featured in the story, but will instead revolve around Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan Xanatos, who preceded Obi-Wan, as the two try to prevent a civil war on Xanatos' home planet. Jedi the Dark Side is, at this point, planned to be a five-issue miniseries. The full interview and more details about the title are available on MTV.com. One place that additional details will not be available is Wizard Magazine. After nearly two decades of publishing news about comics and pop culture in general, it was announced last week that the magazine would be ceasing publication immediately. Wizard will continue to maintain a publication presence on the internet, although details of that have not yet been announced, and, according to the announcement, the Wizard conventions, of which there are now several, will continue unaffected, and in fact be the focus of the newly reorganized corporate entity. Of possibly more interest to Star Wars fans, it was also announced that Wizards' sister publication, Toy Fair, was also ceasing publication immediately. No word yet as to whether the subject matter of the Toy Fair publication will also make the transfer to digital media. This week's video game news, more delays for the LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, Online retailers Amazon and GameStop have both slipped their release date for this title from Traveler's Tales and LucasArts to March 22nd from the earlier announced February 15th. 
There was no official announcement of this delay, and thus no official explanation for why it has taken place. Distraught and disappointed gamers can, however, perhaps console themselves with new footage released this week by BioWare of the also often delayed upcoming Star Wars The Old Republic MMORPG. Unlike some of the previous trailers for the game, which appeared more like cinematic releases than video games, this trailer appears to feature actual gameplay or something quite like it. Entitled Flashpoints, it is available for viewing at SWTOR.com. Lost in all the kerfuffle last week concerning the return of Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn in last week's Clone Wars episode was the return of another Star Wars veteran to the franchise in that episode. Sam Witwer, Galen Starkiller himself from the Star Wars The Force Unleashed franchise, played the part of Sun in last week's episode. Details about the appearance and an interview with Whitwer is available on StarWars.com. This week's collecting news. Images of Wave 6 of Hasbro's Vintage Collection were made available via attendees of the UK Toy Fair. Images are available on JediNews.co.uk of the Wave, including Weekway Skift Guard, the previously seen Luke Skywalker pilot Dagobah, General Lando, the Nick 2 Jedi from Attack of the Clones, the Phase 1 Clone Trooper, also from Attack of the Clones, as well as a Revenge of the Sith AT-RT driver. Those who want their figures now and cheap, however, should go to Toys R Us or ToysRUs.com, where Jeffrey is offering a 2 for ten ninety nine special on Clone Wars and Saga Legends figures. While you're there, you can keep an eye out for clearanced Captain Rex helmets for $15, as well as clearanced Galactic Heroes figures for $3, which may or may not be available in your area. However, seemingly available in everyone's area now, also at Toys R Us, are the two Battle Over Indoor multi-packs. Those with pre-orders from Gentle Giant received an email this week highlighting the products that will be released over the next 30 days. The list is quite long and some of the items are quite expensive, but some of the highlights include last year's Premier Guild membership offer busts, the Snow Bunny Padme Christmas Special Bust, the Force Unleashed Battle Damaged Darth Vader mini bust from the first Force Unleashed video game, as well as the Jabba the Hutt Palace bookends. Full details are available on the Gentle Giant website, and for those of you who did pre-order, you can check the list and prepare your wallet for the upcoming Joan Collins special. Lastly this week, do you live in the Valley of the Sun? Do you like Star Wars? Do you like basketball? If you answered yes to these questions, then you probably already have your ticket to Star Wars The Clone Wars Night with the Phoenix Suns. Highlights include an exclusive Phoenix Suns Clone Wars t-shirt, the opportunity to win Star Wars prizes, a Star Wars costume contest, and Phoenix Suns cheerleaders and Princess Leia costumes. The only downside of the evening seems to be that you will have to watch the Suns play the Sacramento Kings, who are occasionally mistaken for an actual NBA franchise. This all takes place on February the 13th, and combining sports and Star Wars will no doubt make it an extremely awesome Valentine's present for your wife and or girlfriend. So head on down and see Duke basketball legend Grant Hill and some guy named Nash. Memo to the writers at the Clone Wars. You are ruining the Padme character. Now, I never thought Padme was that great of a character in the first place. In Episode 1, we never really knew which one she was. In Episode 2, she just kept telling Anakin that no, they couldn't have a relationship until he confessed his mass murder tendencies to her and then she fell in love with him. And then in Episode 3, she was literally there just to give birth to Luke and Leia and then die. Although she did show us that she had learned how to whine like a Skywalker. 
but her scenes of real substance were cut from the final version of the film. But given these limitations as a character, one thing we know that she knows is how bad the Separatists are. She saw what they did to her planet in Episode 1. They captured her and tried to kill her in Episode 2. She should know through her secret husband that Count Dooku is not a political idealist, but actually a Sith Lord. She should hate the Separatists, yet we just saw about two dozen episodes in which all she wants to do is hold hands and sing Kumbaya. You'd think she'd want to support the war that her husband is fighting, but I guess not. A couple of you took me up on my request to leave positive reviews of this podcast on iTunes last week, and I appreciate that. That feedback moves us up in the rankings and gets us more listeners, which never hurts. Again, I thank you for listening and ask that you mention the podcast in whatever forums you happen to habitate. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit www.thisweekinstarwars.com or www.twisw.com for links to old episodes, news about the show, as well as links to some of the stories we discussed in today's program. You can follow us on our breaking news Twitter feed, TWISWCast, and we welcome comments on our Facebook page. We also welcome news suggestions, questions, and comments via email at host at thisweekinstarwars.com. Help us grow the community. If you enjoyed This Week in Star Wars, please go to iTunes and leave a positive review of the podcast. You've been listening to This Week in Star Wars. We troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All of the trademarks are property of their respected trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei!